During the months of September and October 2008, governments throughout the world took a series of unprecedented steps to buttress tottering banks. In the United States, the Federal Reserve and the Treasury Department have flooded the financial system with liquidity, granted commercial banking licenses to the few investment banks left standing, lent funds against financial instruments turned toxic, and purchased non-voting equity and senior debt in a host of firms and banks. Several European countries have guaranteed all bank deposits and short-term interbank loans. These steps served to halt the panic, at least temporarily, and have thus prevented runs on banks and the seizing up of the credit markets. Still, these were mere palliatives. They did not tackle the roots of the crisis, though they averted it. Instead of eliminating risky, ill-considered investments and bad loans by allowing defaults and bankruptcies, governments have shifted debts and risks from financial institutions to taxpayers and sovereigns. The question was thus no longer, will this or that bank survive, but will this or that country remain solvent? Iceland, for instance, essentially went belly up. So did Greece. Other countries, including the United States, are liable to pay for this largesse with a bout of pernicious inflation. It might take time, but it's inevitable. And even as the United States begins its long recovery, Europe and Asia are left to bear the brunt of American profligacy avarice, regulatory dysfunction, and short-sightedness. According to a research note published by Credit Suisse, the Baltics, Bulgaria, Ukraine, Romania, and Hungary face many of the same macroeconomic strains as Iceland, with deep balance of payments deficits and a high ratio of private sector credit to GDP. To this, one can add South Africa, for instance, and recently, most recently, Turkey. Shifting risk from the private sector to the public one, and from one location, the United States, to others, Europe, Asia, these are not long-term solutions. They only postpone the inevitable. The imbalances in the international financial system are such that unwinding them requires a prolonged and painful global recession. In economics, like in everything else in life, there is no free lunch.